episode two, turn about corner. As long as we draw breath, the wheel of fate turns. Spinning big crimes and little crimes together. And when the wheel stops... You die. June 15th, 9.12am, Wright & Co. Law Offices. Hello everyone, Triple S back here with some more apologies, it's Ace Attorney. We got... Christoph Gavin sent to jail for murdering a guy and Apollo found out that Wright had given him a fake well fake evidence, a fake playing card, so he punched Wright in the face like that and pretty much saying like you know, I hate you, you're rubbish, go away and you know, stuff like that. Well he didn't really say that but he probably meant it. And I think he's not heard from Wright at all since then, until now, where he's going to be going to the Ryan Co. offices, so we'll see what he's doing there. Two months have passed since Mr. Gavin's arrest, there you go, like I said. My first trial, and I lost both my mentor and my job. Yeah, I'll admit it, I was screwed. But even when I hit bottom, I told myself I'd never come here. Honest. Here being the legendary Wright & Co. Law Officers. Okay, Justice, time to spot... S stop trembling. We're not going to try and spot it. Ah, you must be here for the interview. Right this way. Huh? Hello there. You found the right place. Welcome. Uh... What's with this girl? Well now, shall we begin? Begin what? Right, first things first. Any special talents? Um, talents? Yes, well, you must have at least one. Well, uh, I guess... Defending? Defending? An unusual talent, but it'll do. With a little jazzing up, of course. You'd think so? Let's give it a go, shall we? Huh? Go ahead. Show me. Defend. Just give it all you've got. Don't hold back now. What are you talking about? I can't just defend here. First lesson, a professional can perform anywhere. Thanks. We want people to be laughing with us. Not at us. Thanks. I'm not sure why they should be laughing at all. What? What exactly do you think you came here to do? What? Um, defend... No? Da da da. Excuse me, but do you know where you are? Huh? The right uncle law office is right. Oh. I was afraid of that. Don't worry, you're not the first. Look what's going on here. Who are you? I came here to meet with the person in charge. Well, you've apparently made no fewer than two mistakes. Mistakes? I got a call from Mr. Wright this morning. Perhaps you should go read the sign out front again? What's that to read? Look, it says right there. Oh. Why does it say Wright Talent Agency? Welcome to the Wright Talent Agency, where you've always come to the right place. I'm Juicy Wright, CEO. I'm a magician. It all came flooding back. The trial, that girl. Hello, sir. Please pick a card. That's right. She's my daughter. Trucy Wright? Here, check out our flyer. So, what's your name? Apollo. Apollo Justice. Attorney at law. And we're just going to have a chat with her now. The right talent agency. So is this really a talent agency? You bet. Daddy started it seven years ago when he quit law. Of course, we only have two people signed up right now. Two people. Does that include you? Trucy Wright. Magician extraordinaire. I've done a lot of stage shows. Paid too. I'm a professional, you know. Uh, right. Promise you'll come to one of my shows, okay? Let's 
see. Oh, and the other person that agency represents is Phoenix Wright, pianist extra extraordinaire. Your dad, in other words. Didn't he say he couldn't play the piano? Our agency doesn't see that's a problem. Why, there are many magicians who can't do magic. At least you're optimistic, I'll give you that. Uh, Trucy Wright. So, you're his, uh, your Phoenix Wright's daughter. That's right. After Daddy, after Daddy quit law seven years ago, I promised I would keep him fed. So I'm kind of his sugar daddy. Get it? Nope. I'm in charge of this whole office too. Pretty amazing for a young lass of 15, wouldn't you, say, wouldn't you agree? 15? Uh, how old is Mr. Wright? Daddy, oh, he's 33 this year. I'm sure that's a good explanation. I hope. <laughs> Phoenix Wright. Um, about Mr. Wright giving up law. It was because of that incident seven years ago, wasn't it? Eh? You know about that? Not the details. I remember the news, though. It was a big deal. So I hear. I was too young to understand what was going on. I'll ask Daddy about it next time I get a chance. Daddy, right. That reminds me about Mr. Wright. He gave me a call this morning to come in. Daddy's not here right now. He's in the hospital. The hospital? Yeah, he's on strict, strict bed rest until he gets better. What? Okay. Which hospital is Mr. Wright in? I'll pay him a visit. Oh, the Hickfield Clinic. It's quite close. Right. Well, I'll be going now. And I'll uh, give this showbiz gig some thought, okay? Wait. I'll go with you. Okay, she's tagging along. June 15th, 9.45am, Hickfield Clinic. So, this is Mr. Wright's hospital. Hello, you. Ah, visitors, are you? Huh? Uh, yeah, are you the uh, doctor? Yep, Dr. Hickfield's the name. <laughs> Good morning, doctor. Oh, hiya there, Trucy. Cute as ever. <laughs> is this Daddy's room? Oh, yeah. Except he's gone for a morning checkup. Be back soon. Hey, Miss Trucy. Got any places you'd like examined? <laughs> Doctor, the nurse was looking for you. Why, if it isn't the daddy of the cutest little girl in town? Oh, huh. Guess I'll be off then. <laughs> Later, Trucy. Weirdo. What an odd bird that guy was. Yeah, exactly. Good morning. Didn't expect you so soon, Apollo. Mr. Wright. What are you doing here? What happened? So, what happened? Who could have imagined it? Me, victim of a hit and run. A hit and... You were hit by a car? Oh, he tried to swerve. I'll give him that. Picture me tossed 30 feet through the air. Only stopping when my head hit that telephone pole. You hit a telephone pole with your head? You okay? I suppose the hat might have taken some of the blow. Thankfully, my only injury was a sprained ankle. He really is as lucky as they say. Uh, about Trucy. There's something that's, uh, well, it just doesn't sit right. I just can't believe you have a daughter, Mr. Wright. And she's so big. Not fat, but uh, you know what I mean. Oh, Trucy's still a child. Daddy, how many times do I have to tell you? I'm not a child anymore. <laughs> You'll always be Daddy's little baby girl to me, Trucy. <laughs> My foot. I'm not buying it. Oh, something you should know about Trucy. She's a magician, right? She told me. Not a mere stage magician. She's a genius. Dee! Oh, Daddy. You'll soon come to appreciate her talents. You could just tell me things instead of insinuating them. Right, talent agency. So, why did you contact me? What could the right talent agency possibly want with me? You need to get prickly now. Hey, I didn't ask to be dragged like this. Huh? Didn't you come into the office of your own free will anyway? Well, yeah, of course. Help! We're in big trouble here in the office, big! I thought someone was dying. You don't think this is big trouble? My talent agency represents only two people. Uh, one of them is in the hospital. That's right, Daddy. How are we going to pay this month's rent and the groceries? Yeah, that's the problem with such a tight operation. It's a symbiotic relationship. 
one of us falls, the other two must fall. It isn't exactly a suitable conversation to be having with a 15 year old kid. In any case, if Apollo here can help you, you'll have to transfer to a new school again. No, I can't. I only just made, you fr I only just made friends. How could you do this to me? To us, Polly. Huh? What? That's my fault. On that note, how about you come work for us? I've got the perfect client for you already lined up. A uh, client? You mean I get to do my job? I get to defend in court? Alright. I'll hear what you have to say. You got him, Daddy. Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> now it's time to reel him in. It's official. I'm scared. Our client. Alright, so who's the client? Ah, yes. Here, take a look at the map and I'll explain. Last night, I left the office just before 9 o'clock. I was going to that... In... Indo... Indochine? Indo... I don't know. Past the joint. Alden Tays. I play piano there, of course. That's when it happened. The car sent me flying, nicked a telephone pole. And zoomed away. Creepy, huh? Just a tad. It's almost as creepy as hearing you tell the story like it was no big deal. The car sped off in this direction. So, good luck. Huh? You wanted a client, didn't you? Well, I'm your client. Find the guy who knocked me into that telephone pole. Oh, hold on, I'm a defense attorney, not a detective. Don't worry, once you found the guy, I intend to sue him. Then you can stick it to him in court. I'm not a prosecutor either. I'm sorry, but this is crazy. I'm going home. Don't get so worked up, it was just a joke. Huh? Oh, Daddy. Sorry, Apollo, he loves jokes. He, ju he just loves jokes, you know? Even the ones that aren't very funny. Your real client should be stopping by the office any time now. The office? You mean the talent agency? No harm in going. It's not like I have anything else to do. One more thing. Good luck into my accident too, would you? I marked the scene of the tragedy on this map. It's right in front of this park. Should be easy to find. So he's going to make me investigate this after all. Map added to the court record. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the agency to meet with the clients. June 15th, 10.05am, uh, AM. Right, talent agency. Hey, hey, hey! How long are you planning on making me wait, eh? Ah, good morning. Hey there, Trusty Doll. Sounds like your pops had a bit of a rough spot, eh? All's well that ends well, I guess. This is our client? Hey, this is that Apollo fellow, eh? Oh, uh, yes, the name's Apollo. Look at him there, arms all cross like, ready to fight. Yes, sir, you don't mean that literally, do you? The boss told you what I need, right? Don't let me down now, Apollo. Don't worry about your defense, sir, I'm on it. Defense? Your noodle half cooked. It's too late for defense. My castle's been stormed, my keep's been kept, my noodle stand's been stolen. Noodle? You know Mr. L. Doom from the noodle stand, don't you, Polly? No nicknames, please, and no, of course I don't know him. You new in these parts? Not really. Then you know the best noodles in town, L. Doom's noodles. Uh, whose noodles? My noodles. Uh, help me out here, Trisha Doll. This is Mr. Guy L. Doom. Our client. Maybe you can tell us what the problem is, Mr. Aldoon. Anything for you, Trusty Doll. Let's have a chat with this guy. Like, who the heck is he? So, you run a noodle stand, Mr. Aldoon. Guy Aldoon's the name, and noodles are my game. The secret's in the soup. I've been searching for the perfect soup for a year and a half. Oh, that's not that long, really. My family's been noodle men for generations, got a lot of expectation on my shoulders. Fifteen fathers passing the noodle to fifteen sons. Ooh, sorry, I have to... My wrist is killing me! <laughs> That's a pretty old noodle. Aye, and fool that I was, I pushed it away. I rebelled against my pops and picked another livelihood. By 
But that didn't turn out so well. Oh. There was no denying it. Salty bluff. Bluff. Bruff. Runs through these veins, boy. Can't pronounce my eyes. So it's like destiny that you became what you are. Right. Destiny's the word. Oh, I fought it. But in the end, I was bound by the twisted noodle of fate. And the mental image I cared to linger on. So last year, I started my noodle stand. The 15th generation of Eldoon's noodles. Eldoon's noodles. Um, so tell me more about Eldoon's noodles. You don't know the genius that are my noodles? I make them so salty, why they're saltier than salt. No, I really don't want to find out. That is a regular at his noodle stand. He frequented my pop stand back during his attorney days too. Yep, him and his assistant. I'm sorry I'll be sure to drop by your stand soon. Wish you could, Sonny. Eh? Heck, I wish I could. I'd give anything for a bowl mark now. What do you mean? It was stolen! My stand! Gone! Stolen? Stolen stand. It was last night. I was doing my rounds, blowing my whistle. It's not a whistle. It's like an ice cream truck's bell, but louder. He even gets complaints. <laughs> now he just tried to butter me up. That sounded more like the blues than a whistle. I closed up my stand for the night and packed by the house. Then this morning, dark and early, it was gone. My keep, my castle. Oh! Maybe some bum card it off? Just guessing here. Well, I don't care who did it. Without that stand, I'm finished. All my noodle bowls are in there too. That's the saddest thing I've heard all day. You know it. Anyhow's that's the deal. Good luck. Good. Huh? Wait. What exactly is your request? <laughs> my noodle stand. Find it. And the day you bring my baby back is the day you feast on as many noodles as you want. I can't say the word, word noodles properly when speaking quickly. Because I make it so hot and salty two bowls will kill a man. Then I'd really need defence. Speaking of defence, that's what I do. I'm a lawyer, not a detective. This is where I live. You drop by if you need my in any info, okay? Nell Loon's house. Get him back today if you can, Apollo. I got noodles to make. Things have certainly taken a turn for the bazaar. Traffic accidents and noodle stand thieves. Um, actually, there was something I wanted to ask you about too, Apollo. Huh? I have a bad feeling about this. Ah, well, listen to the lady's problem now. Don't be cruel. I lost something last night. That is, something was stolen. Hey, what's this? More thievery and skullduggery. Well, um, someone stole a pair of my panties. Panties? Trucy's request. Um, so they were, um, stolen, your, um, my panties, yes. Ah, right, panties. That's a crying shame. That is true at all. I was alone in the office last night. I hung my panties out the window there to dry. When a thief came and took them. My favourite panties. I ran out of him. Give those back, I shouted. Wait. Well, that was certainly brave of you. But I lost him. Without those panties, I don't know what I'll do. A darn crying shame, yep. Well, at least the scene of the crime is convenient. Mark it on your map. I'll be heading home now. Remember, find my stand or there's an empty bowl in your future, Polo. Uh, right. And you help out, Trusadol. Here too, you hear? God, you speak so weirdly, dude. Things have certainly picked up, haven't they? We had no work yesterday, and now we have three cases. I... Uh, I guess. Let's see where we stand. Not in a courtroom, that's where. Well, the first item on my list. Phoenix Wright, Daddy's hit and run accidents. I have to find the one who hit him. He's going to pay us for this again. And the second item, Mr. Aldoon's request to find his stolen stand, for which we stand to gain a bowl of salty noodles. And the last request is mine, to find my stolen panties. 
bowl of noodles is looking better and better. Let's go, Polly, to the streets. Aren't you enthusiastic? How can I not be? Let's crack these cases, you and me. Oh, I guess we might as well get started. Let's see, a hidden run, a stolen stand. Last but not least, stolen panties. Okay, so we're going to move straight to the accident scene. I'm just going to amend my guide here. June 15th, accident scene. Well, pretty simple there. So this is where Mr. Wright got hit by that car. According to the map, this is the place. What a huge mansion. It feels like Chinatown. Hello, there's a nice looking lady over there. Let's question her. Um, okay. I'm more curious about... the park over there too. Ooh, hello. Excuse me, um, can we have a few words with you? You want something? Whoa, that husky voice. Why am I suddenly sweating? That's quite a house you've got there. You must have a lot of money. Woo! Money sounds like something my son would call his friends. This is the Kitaki family mansion, little girl. Eh? You, kid with the hair. You want something? Uh, um, me? No, not a thing, bye! Apollo, we can't leave without questioning her. Why don't you know something? But, but the, the Kitaki family. They're the biggest organised crime syndicate in town. If you're going to ask something, ask it. If you're man enough. Wow, right. Yay, wait a minute, in the shape, ma'am. Does she know no fear? I'm Plum, Plum Kitaki. Wife of the fourth head of the Kitaki family business. Friends call me Little Plum. I'm a little Apollo Justice Attorney at law. If folks could kill this woman, would be a mass murderer by now. Let's have a chat with her, I guess. The Kitakis. Little Plum, that's a really cute name for someone, so... Yes? Whoa. What is it, Apollo? How about you go through me when talking to her, okay, Juicy? Huh, that seems like a bit of a needless procedure. I'm a lawyer. I live for needless procedures. A little girl, you should know, we're gangsters. Gangs. Oh, that means you're the bad guys. Juicy, through me, please, I'm begging you here. <laughs> bad guys, I like the sound of that. I'm going to need some warm tea after this. There's a lot of hard work to protect a family fortune. Things aren't as easy as they used to be for us bad guys. So you're saying that business is in a slump? Let's not ask about business if we can help it, please. Uh, last night's accident. There was a car accident here last night. Last night. Of course you wouldn't know about it, so sorry to bother you. Wait. Yes? You're talking about that man, aren't you? The one who flew 33 and just walked away. That's my daddy. I should have known. One of our capos thought he'd made a, make a great point man. Capo? Point man? Um, could you avoid using too much uh, industry lingo? In any case, it's been nothing but trouble. I've been cleaning up this mess this morning. Bah! Cleaning up this... paint? Ah! Splattered paint. Was well, this paint spilled at the time of the accident? It was around 9 last night, so I heard a crashing noise. I found your father drowning in the sea of paint. So you came to his rescue? You've my husband, the boss, to thank for that. Oh, you have my husband. That's weird to say it like that. The car that hit your father knocked over this paint. Then turned the corner and sped away. We're in the middle of repainting our wall, you see? I'm sure that dragon is glaring at me. Why are you out here cleaning it up? What do you mean? I mean, aren't you a gangster? Don't you have any goons to do your dirty work for you? Please go through me when you want to! <laughs> Don't be such a stiff liar boy. I suppose we gangsters do have a certain image. Um, yes. But we're community oriented gangsters, you see. The boss likes to give back to the people, see? 
How noble of him. I availed myself of the public facilities to get rid of all the garbage. Now there's just the paint on the street to deal with. Public facilities? I wonder if she means that trash can. Uh, okay, I guess we're done here. So we go over to the right. Oh, hello. Who's that? She's looking at the park. She's pretty. But she has a story, you know? There is something about her. Too bad she seems to be in a bit of a rush. And she's gone. Uh, did I actually get everything you added? So we examine... The trash can. There's a big trash can on the way into the park. It's a bit of an odd spot to put it just right there. Or did they like move it inside behind the, you know, the thing? I don't know. I guess we could check it out. A detective's life show is a hard one. I'm an attorney, actually. Huh? Ah, two pieces of garbage with paint on them. These are slippers. They look like those slippers you get at the hospital. Look at this Apollo. Doesn't this go on a car? It's a side view mirror. Looks like it was torn off when it smacked into something. Or someone. Wait, you don't think? If you do, this could be from the car that hit Mr. Wright. Wow, he took off his mirror. Never knew Daddy was so strong. I only have room in my pocket for one of these though. Which do you want to take? Which one do we take? We take the mirror. The mirror slips into pocket. Oh god, yeah, look at her over there. She's trying to climb over. Looks like there's some trouble by the park gate. I smell an incident. Ma'am, there's no entrance to the park. Now don't you tell me where I can't go, young fella. I always walk through this park on my way home. Please get down from there, you'll hurt yourself, ma'am. That's quite the determined old lady. Personally, I'm a bit more interested in this park. You know what I think? I bet they're filming a movie. Let's go take a look. Maybe we'll see someone famous. Hey, miss, stay out of the park. You got mad at me. Um, did something happen here, officer? Huh? Uh, no, move along, nothing to see. Why don't you kids go play somewhere else? We're not kids and we're not playing, I'm an attorney. Something wrong? Ah, oh, this is this guy. We're fine, ma'am, nothing to report. Look who it is, ladies and gentlemen! It's Sky! Oh, detective. Why is she wearing a lab coat? You hardly want to comment on how people are dressed. And these kids are curiosity seekers, ma'am. They claim to be lawyers. Why don't you kids run along and play someplace else? Look, we're not. Or I might spill something on that pretty face of yours. Want a dose of experimental hydro. hydroxyacelian. dosetress. Come again! What's hydroxy stuff? Whatever it is, it doesn't sound good. Let's go, Juicy. Try to keep out the riffraff if you would. Yes, ma'am. How are we going to get more information like this? Why don't we ask that nice woman across the street? Oh yes, that nice woman. <laughs> so we pan back to the left. We exit. And we have chats. People park. Can I ask you a question? What? What happened in the park across the street? Oh yes, quite the commotion. Chicago Lightning, as the boss would say. Chicago. Huh? Gunfire. Someone was killed. Strange circumstances, too. You're kidding. What a morning. Trouble everywhere. The park, the gate, even our house. Did something happen at your house, too? A crime without honour. Without remorse. It's a private matter. Wanna hear about it? Somehow I don't think no is acceptable. Answer, Polly. God, I, my stutter. Christ. Private matter. So, what happened at your house? Bloomers, last night. Eh? I got a bad feeling about this. Me, little plum Kentucky, the victim of a panty snatcher. What? So, it wasn't just my panties that were stolen? Got you too, did they? Poor thing. Like I said, whoever did this is a hardened criminal. It wasn't you, was it? No, of course not. Mercy! I've heard word that panties have been disappearing lately. 
and their missing panties all have something in common. It's hard to imagine Trucy's and Mrs. Kataki's panties having much in common. Just imagine Miss, Mrs. Kataki's panties. Yeah. I know. We'll find your bloomers too. Great. Show me what you're made of. What have you got me into this time, Trucy? Oh, hello. Does it not? That girl from before. Oh, welcome home, sweetie. Ah, hello, m mother. She's a Kataki too. Um, miss, miss. Yeah. Here, our flyer. The Rights Anything Agency? Anything Agency? Yeah, do you like the new flyer? So, um, this is our defence attorney, Mr. Apollo Justice. Attorney? Drop by our office. We'll be waiting. Ah, goodbye. Why'd you give her our flyer? I don't know, she seemed like she could use some help. She's the heiress to a gangster dynasty, or dynasty, however you want to pronounce it. She doesn't need our help. I wouldn't be so sure. Yeah? Okay, I think we're done with everything here. I'm just going to amend my guide. I'm pretty sure we're all done. So we're going to move to the scene of the stand theft. June 15th, scene of the stand theft. So, what's this place? This would be Mr. Eldoon's house, silly. Oh, so this is where his stand was stolen from. I can see a piece of evidence lying on the ground already. Hey! Oh. Look, there's a police car packed over there. You're right. What's with the sparkly entrance? Why is this place a hospital? It's a sign, Maractus Clinic. Oh, oh, that's where the thief went. The thief? The one who snatched my panties. He ran into this clinic last night. Wait, maybe that police car is here to find my panties. I doubt it. Well, there's only one way to be sure. Let's investigate. Ah, there you are, Sonny. Well, you find anything yet? Um, no, not yet. The longer you loaf around here, the saltier your victory bowl gets. Just remember that. This bowl of noodles is sounding like less, sounding less like payment and more like punishment. Uh, I guess we gotta talk to him some more. Apparently, Eldoon's noodles again. So you stand, Eldoon's noodles, was it? Aye, passed down from father to son. That Stan seen its share of salt. Mm-hmm. Salt runs in the family, you might say. A bit high blood pressure run does too. So, your stand, Eldoon's noodles, was stolen. It wasn't just a stand that was stolen, Sunday boy. I lost those bobbly wheels, my salt crusted stew pot, my stained sign. I didn't just lose a stand, I lost a legend. No one steals a legend and gets away with it on my watch. Let's find that legend, Apollo. Isn't it about time he bought a new one anyway? Stolen stand. Are there any more details you could give me about the stand? You bet, sonny boy, it happened last night. It was blowing, I was blowing my whistle like always, crying the town I was. The smell of broth filled the streets, thick and salty. I got home, well, right before 10pm I reckon. Guess he's not aiming for that late night market. I washed my balls and gave the wheels a squirt of grease, then I went inside. When did you notice it had been stolen? Early this morning, before the sun rose, work starts early. Do that many people eat noodles for breakfast? Washed upon the salty shores of ruination. That stand had my whole life in it. Nay, my whole being. They took everything? All my soup stock, my noodles, my bowls, and my dreams. At least they left one bowl. Look, they're on the ground. If you don't find that stand today, I'll be forced to walk the streets peddling that bowl. My last bowl. Please, I'm under enough pressure here it is, as it is. Give me some space. The garage. That's it. That's where the thief who stashed my panties ran to. It's a crying shame, that is. They have to steal, make it my loincloth, not some pretty girl's panties. People stop calling this 15 year old girl pretty and stuff. It's not right. The garage, right? Oh, garage. Garage, garage. I don't freaking know. Uh, you don't think the thief lives here, do you? Fair. I want to put it past that good for nothing doctor. 
Ah, do I detect a little animosity here? Let's make sure to check out that garage thoroughly. Okay. So we got to examine first the ball on the ground. Is this yours, Mr. Eldoon? Hey, that, there's the hat and soul of Eldoon's noodles. The bowl absorbs my salty soup. Pretty soon it's going to taste just like noodles. Wow, it does smell like noodles. All my other bowls got taken away in my stand. Get it back for me, silly boy, I'm begging you. Bowl added to the cot record. And now we've got to go to the left. We've got to look at the police car. Oop, there we go. I don't understand if there was an ambulance outside, but a police car? Maybe they're tax evaders. Ah, sorry miss. No going into the clinic, clinic today. Something happened? Huh? Oh, no. Nothing to see here. Move along. <laughs> I have to find someplace else to play doctor. Do we look like the right age to be playing doctor? We need a little more info on this Maractis clinic. We've got to ask Mr. Eldoon. He's their neighbour after all. Oh, and all. Evil one. And we should check out that garage. What if the thief who stole my pants is still in there? Huh. <laughs> Uh, what do we do? We pan right, and we got to talk to him again at the Maractis Clinic. Hey, do you think something happened next door? There's a police car out front. Feh, probably gave someone food poisoning, I bet. If anyone's at risk of giving someone food poisoning, that police car got here this morning, actually. That's what they were up to, but they wouldn't even tell me, the neighbour. Feh. Huh. Not that I was surprised much, that doctor worked for the wrong crowd. It was just a matter of time before he got what was coming to him. Feh. The wrong crowd? Never you mind about that. Okay, I guess we won't. Um, we're gonna move to the garage garage. Which one is it for British compared to American? I forget, I'm forgetting right now. June 15th from Actis Clinic, garage garage. This is the place, this is where that panty snatcher ran. You sure? Maybe. Let's look for clues. Clues to a panty snatching. Clues like a pair of panties. Um, Trucy? Can you try not saying panties so many times? Okay, so the first thing we've got to do is examine the car. This green car. There's something about this car. Let's take a closer look. Uh, which one do we use? Well, we'll look at the pink thing first. Look, a cell phone. Someone dropped it beneath this tyre. The car moved it with Kush for sure. Uh, I wonder if it belongs to the doctor here. We should bring it to him later. Cell phone and it's got record. And then the tailpipe. That reminds me. I once read a record of a case that Mr. Wright worked on many years ago. Huh? Apparently, there was this car with a piece of cloth shoved into the tailpipe. That was the first time we met in my sky as well. That piece of cloth turned out to be a vital clue to solving the case. Wow! Remember that case record whenever I'm checking out a car? And I always check the tailpipe. Everyone's got to have a hobby, I guess. Wouldn't it be funny if... Hey! There's something in there! What? Wait a second. Are these your... What? Already? <gasps> There's a cat up there! Wow, thank you, Apollo. You're a genius. Amazing. No, no, really. Don't mention it. No, I'm serious. I'm really impressed. You must have a nose for finding girls' panties. Um, what are those? My little panties, of course. They come home to Mama. I can't wait to use them. You're going to put them on? Now? Watch closely now. See nothing in the panties. Ta-da! Whoa! Where'd that come from? How'd that bowl get in your panties? My panties are an extra dimensional space. Anything can fit in there. They're my magic panties. It's one of my best tricks. Magic panties? They love them over at the Wonder Bar. I do shows there nightly. You mean those panties are a prop? You could have told me a little sooner. Trucy's panties put discreetly away in Trucy's pocket. <laughs> well, that's one case closed, at least. What are you saying? You still have to catch the sly devil that ran off with the tool of my trade. Oh, right. 
Something tells me we're not finished searching this garage. Garage. Anyway. Uh, what do we do? Oh, the broken mirror over here. Hey, look at that. The mirror's been broken off. Now this is a clue. What? You smell like you know something I don't. You aren't keeping a clue from me, are you, Polly? Clue? Let's see. Show evidence. No evidence. No, we don't have any evidence. No, forget it. Truth. No, no. Never show evidence. I think I do have just the clue you've got in mind. My clue is this. Whoa, it's the same colour and size and everything. A perfect match. Guess we could check it out. Ah, two pieces of garbage with paint on them. Look at this Apollo. Doesn't this go in a car? It's a side view mirror. Looks like it was torn off when it was smacked into something. Or someone. Do we really have to have a flashback for that? Well, it looks like we just solved the case. So the car that hit Daddy last night is sitting right in front of us, yep. Wow, you put the pro and professional Apollo. Blah, 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 blah. Gee, thanks, Trucy. Oh. Apollo! Huh? What is it? Help well, me solve this case, we should go report to Daddy. He'll mope if you leave him alone too long, knowing him. Um, okay. Doesn't seem the tank to mope, though. This is hardly a case worth reporting. Let me just amend my guide. Uh, well, first, we've got to move to... Oh, got to go to Eldine's house to get out of here. Then we move to the right anything agency. And then we move to Hitfield Clinic. God, I'm glad they streamlined this moving in the later games. June 15th, Hitfield Clinic. Yo, how goes it? Daddy, how'd you feel? Not bad, Juicy, not bad. It's good to have you young'uns on the case. Let's all Daddy-O get some well-deserved R&R. &R. The other didn't need their rest. Uh, isn't he only 33? Dude, I'm 24 and I'm a freaking old man. And um, we've cleared up most of the cases. I was right about you. Competent, capable. Tell me what you found out, if you want to. Your enthusiasm is overwhelming. Okay, let me chat with him. Progress report. Well, I certainly didn't expect you back this early. Polly is amazing. He found my panties so quick. Almost like he was the one who stole them. You have an interesting concept of praise. And? Did you find the mad driver who gave me that 30 foot toss? Apparently it was a doctor from the Maractus Clinic. Ah, oh, Maractus, eh? I've heard of him. Nothing good, mind you. That reminds me, a police car was parked outside the clinic. Maybe something happened. What is this Maractus Clinic anyway? Uh, Maractus Clinic. All I've heard of the rumours. That clinic's been making good money. In a bad way. Bad? Ties to organised crime, the Kentucky family. Um, the Kentucky family? He did that on purpose. Some injuries you can't take to a public hospital, see? They use a Maractus Clinic for their patch-up jobs. Interesting. People pack. Looked like something had happened in that park. Ah, a body was found there in unusual circumstances. Something more unusual than being dead. It's not our concern in any case. Right, let's ignore that and find that noodle stand. Whatever happened to professional curiosity? Thanks, really. If I get tired of sleeping, maybe I'll head down to the Marcus place. Maybe hit him up for some reparations. A little legal action would do me some good. Um, I was wondering when I get paid. We solved the case for your accident and um, found a missing article of clothing. My panties. That leaves a null stand. Eh? Feel free to drop in if you get stuck. I'd be happy to help with anything not involving money. Goodbye, quid pro quo. Hello, pro bono. <laughs> right, back to the office to plan our next move. Do we really have to go back to the office? Is that the only place we can move to after this? Yep, it is. But we're going to meet someone there anyway. June 15th, right, anything, agency. Hello. You, you're the woman from the Kentucky place. Yes. I know it. Something's the matter and you want our help, right? Well, you come to the right place. This way, please. Um, thank you. 
My name is Alita Tiala. I have a request. Okay, what's your request? Your request? Let me guess, something's been stolen? Um, your flyer. It says, now defending, so I thought... What? You mean you want me... You mean you want me to defend you? Me? Maybe you can tell us what happened? Were you hit by a car? Did someone steal your stand or your panties? No, no. I'm not the client, actually. The client would be my... Well, my fiancé, I suppose you'd call him. Fiancé? What happened to him, then? He was arrested this morning. The charge was murder. Murder? Have you heard about what happened at the park? Ooh, tell a story. So, what's your story? You frequent the Kentucky Fa... Yeah. Kentucky Mansion, yes? You a member of their, um, organisation? No, not yet. Not yet? You see, I'm to be married next month to the boss's son. The boss's son? So he's a, uh, a gangster. Yep, but the Kentuckys are locally responsible gangsters. I thought it'd be nice for a change. Quit my boring job, live the good gangster life. I think you're onto something. Miss Kataki, I like the sound of that. I'm not sure your daddy would care much for that. Murder in the park. What happened? I haven't been told all the details. But I do know a body was found in the park, near the Kataki mansion. There were a lot of police cars there. Apparently the victim was shot with a pistol. But I hear the circumstances of the shooting were rather unusual. And your fiancé was arrested for this? Um, what sort of person is your fiancé? Your fiancé? Your fiancé is the Kentucky family's only son, correct? His name's Waki. Waki Kentucky. God, that... Ugh. I brought a photo. Well, that's quite the photo. Look at the gangster blue badger on his shirt. <laughs> I know, oh, he can be powerful and menacing, but so cute! But if he's the boss's only son... Yes, I'm sure he'll take his father's place someday. Say I'm a boss already, of this agency. Please help my walkie, please. Right, my first solo defence case. Crime boss's son or not, I'll prove he's innocent. I prepared a letter of request, I know you need those. Letter of request, added to the court record. Right, let's go check out the scene of the crime. Oh, so we're going to move back to the Kitaki Mansion, and we're going to say hello again to Emma Sky, and finally get her to believe that we're attorneys. June 15th, Kitaki Mansion. So this is it, my first murder crime scene. Ah, it's you kids again. Well, can't you find some other place to play? We're not playing! We're investigating, aren't we, Apollo? Sir, I have a letter of request here. Letter of... Huh? Why does it say hit request on it? Miss Tiala must have used the Kitaki stationery. Excuse me, coming through. Oh, hello! Oh, it's you, Mr. Gavin. Who is this guy? I must say I'm used to being inspected by the ladies. But this is the first time I felt this way with a man. Mr. Gavin? Ah, Fraulein, what is a sweet morsel like you doing in such a dismal place? Can I help? Yes! The policeman o policeman officer fellow here won't let us in. We even have a letter of request. I must be exhausted, standing out here. I will take you to the scene of the crime. Oh, really? By all leave, officer. Yeah, yes sir, of course. <laughs> Very well, this way, Fraulein. <laughs> hey, what about me? <laughs> oh god. June 15th, people pack. On that note, enjoy your investigation. Thank you. Will we see you again? Ask the wind, Fraulein. I'll be riding on it. Who was that? Eek! Apollo, look! <laughs> Corpse! What? Hey, it's just a mannequin. Wow, it sure got me. Ahem. <clears throat> I think that's exactly what it is you're doing here. There she is. Oh, it's you. How did you kids get in here? 
Oh, this guy, well, he was more like a prince, really. He let us in. Him again. That glimmerous fop, always getting in my way. Anyway, this scene is off limits. Excuse me, we have a letter of request. Ah, one moment. Why is she holding that big ma magnifying glass? I'd recognize that handwriting anywhere. Scientific analysis says this was written by Alita Tiala. Thanks. It took you 30 minutes to figure that out. So, what's up with the mannequin there? He's taking the place of the body, preserving the scene of the crime as it was found. Body was pulling the stand? So you're a defense attorney, are you? Detective Emma Sky. I already knew that. I'm in charge of this crime scene. She doesn't seem that happy about it. She doesn't seem that happy about many things. I trust you know how to stay out of the way. I always carry two pairs of handcuffs, just in case. Uh, so we'll talk to her about the case. Oh wow, you're starring the defendant. It doesn't say to talk about them in the thing. I'll talk about them anyway with her. It doesn't say to do that in the guide. Um, just hit the sky. Quiet, please. It's snack time. Or maybe I lose the other options to talk about because she's eating. Maybe that's why. We're not making much progress here. She must not be very busy. Huh, I never seem to get a lucky break. Back after nine years and they won't give me the position I requested. Then I hear he gave up the defense attorney life. He? Who is he? An ex defense attorney? Uh, I think we know who that is. Your story. Um, Detective Sky. Quiet, please. It's snack time. Yep, yeah, I figured. I figured. Not making any much progress here. She's just not very busy. Yeah, she's just saying the same thing. Okay. Well, I think we all know who she's talking about with the ex-defense attorney, so we don't need to talk about that. So, let's examine. The needle stand. Hey there, no messing with the crime scene. But, but we need to investigate. Apollo, look, that stand. It says Aldoon. I've noticed. Well, we solved the case of the missing stand, at least. But the circumstances could stand to be better. Stand. <laughs> okay, uh, so we got to move now to the Kataki Mansion, and then we move to the Right Anything Agency, and then we move to the Hateful Clinic to tell Phoenix Wright that we found the stand. June 15, Hickfield Clinic. Ah, you're back. Run into some problems? Oh, Polly, didn't you want to tell Daddy something? Who? Me? No, I'm fine, really. What's this? So there's a problem? No, no problem. Actually, I got a defense request. A defense request? That is a problem. Huh? I've given up the courts. I'm not a lawyer anymore. The request was for me. Oh, right. You're a lawyer, aren't you? He's doing that on purpose, I know it. <laughs> oh, Phoenix. This is a long thing. Uh, murder. So what about this defense request? It's related to the murder in People Park, actually. Guess what? We found Mr. Aldoon's noodle stand at the scene of the crime. Did you now? That's unusual indeed. Never heard of a noodle stand being used as the murder weapon. Uh, I think the murder weapon was something else. You mean you don't know what the murder weapon was? That funny, funny detective lady won't let us on the scene. What kind of detective wears a lab coat, anyway? A lab coat? Ah, I didn't think she'd be involved with this. You know her? You could say that. <laughs> yeah, Sky Connection. So, you know her, don't you? I met her on a case. This was about 10 years ago. She was still a high school student at the time. That would make her about the same age as me. That's my daddy. He knows all the police types. Oh wait, maybe you know that other guy too. That other guy? That shining prince on the motorcycle. Prince? Mysterious Prince. Polo, tell me about this Prince of Trucy's. 
I'm in touch with a concerned father. He was at the crime scene. He looked just like Mr. Gavin. Did he now? You know him? My guess is he's, he's, he's Christoph's... Jesus Christ. He's Christoph Gavin's younger brother. His brother? We're acquaintances after a fashion. Clavier Gavin, rock and roll god incarnate. Clavier, what a lovely name. He's so dreamy. Didn't know Mr. Gavin had a brother. Looks like a twin brother, really. What was he doing out there? I have a feeling you'll be crossing paths again soon. Now, what was the problem again? Having trouble investigating the crime scene in the park? Yeah, that, de that detective but we won't let us. Go to the office under the silk top hat. You'll find a bottle of white powder. Try taking that to this detective. White powder? I hope it's not what I think it is. Just take it to her. You'll be fine, you'll see. Oh, and tell her I said hi. Okay. Some mysterious white powder. Right, anything agency. Oh. Uh, what's her face is gone. I assume he means... So this must be the silk top hat Mr. Wright mentioned. Let's take a closer look. Huh? Whoa! You know what this is, Trucy? I remember finding something, something in Daddy's dresser when I was little. I thought it was sugar, so I licked it. He got mad at me. This is getting more and more suspicious. White powder placed gingerly into pocket. Let's go talk to that detective. She's sure to know what that white powder is. I already know what it is. Because I'm the best. I'm just going to amend my guide here. So I saw a video on YouTube with this section of the game. This whole detective part, it only took them like 53 minutes, I think. It's taken me well over an hour, probably, to do all this. Probably because I've, I've had to do all the talking and stuff. Kentucky Mansion. Move to People Park. And we present... The Powder. Um, does this ring any bells? Ah, is that... It couldn't. Where'd you get that? I brought it from the office. You... Work at the Wright and Cole offices, yes? Uh, yeah, sort of. Detective Sky, how do you know my daddy? D -d daddy I'm sorry, who did you say you were? Juicy Wright, Phoenix Wright's daughter. What? Mr. Wright has a daughter? He seems shocked. Well, if you're Mr. Wright's daughter and you're his apprentice, then I'm available to help you in any way I can. Oh, uh, thanks. You can start by not calling me Mr. Wright's apprentice. This powder is used for detecting fin fingerprints. Fingerprints? Guess you might call it a memento from the time I spent with Mr. Wright. White powder memories. If you find any evidence with fingerprints on it, please let me know. We'll dust for prints. Well, she's quite the eager beaver all of a sudden. Uh, what do we do now? So we have a chat with her, actually. She can finally tell us about the case and maybe... Oh yeah, now she tells about your story of the defendant later on. This is where we ask. The report came in late last night. The body was found much as you see it now. Except it was a real body. But why? Why was a body pulling a noodle stand? If I knew the answer to that, I wouldn't still be here. Well, what was the cause of death? A bullet wound to the temple. It was shot by a pistol. A pistol? She looks like Dracula when she does that. Not the easiest thing to come by in this day and age. Unless you're a cop, or a gangster. Incidentally, the victim's name was Pal Maractus. Just read the autopsy report, in fact. Maractus's autopsy report added to the court record. I mean, really? What's up with this case? It's enough to make me want to run off, pulling a mysterious noodle stand behind me. Not so mysterious, actually. We should tell her, Apollo. After all, we know where the stand came from. A likely story, I didn't see- I didn't come here to play games, you know. Actually, we do know where this noodle stand came from. Noodle stand's owner is... This person! No, not really. Uh, where is he? There he is. Who's the old guy? This is the proprietor of Eldoon's Noodles, Mr. Eldoon himself. He's famous in this part of town. Not bad, I guess Mr. Wright picked the right kids for the job. That saved me a lot of work. Thanks! Noodle stand adds to the court record. What sort of person was the victim, anyway? You mean, what did he do? He was a doctor. A doctor? I'm starting to see a connection here. Uh, we'll start with your story. Who, me? I'm just a supervisor for this crime scene. 
Detective Sky, huh? I was out of the country for a while. I came back to be a forensic scientist. Ooh, you're studying abroad? Something like that. I was studying in Europe. Forensic sciences, mind you. But when I got back here, they threw me in criminal affairs. Just like that. Why don't you just become a forensic expert in Europe? Well, I suppose that was an option, but... A lot of favours to repay to people back here. Favours? Wasn't she in high school when she left? What? What's that look for? I was involved in an incident before I left. Mr. Wright and his people helped me out. I owed them. Really? I had no idea. If she's been out of the country for a while. She probably doesn't know about Mr. Wright's current, um, state of affairs. The defendants. Um, could you tell us a bit about the defendant? He's the only son of the Kitaki family, yes? Waki Kitaki. I don't know if he is in if he is the boss's son, but he's certainly he's certainly throwing his right around. Violently. In the detention centre. I see. Why was he arrested in the first place? Dot dot. You're a defense attorney, aren't you? You're not his by any chance. Uh actually, yes I am. Well, we have a witness to the moment of the crime. Eh? The witness called the police. They'll be testifying during the trial tomorrow. What? Uh, the victim. Could you tell us a bit more about the victim? Well, let's see. Apparently he's the physician at a clinic in the area. Quite well off too, from the sound of it. The clinic's name is the Maractis Clinic. Uh, maybe that's why the cop car was parked there. What? You been to the clinic? Yeah, they want a related issue. I told the detective about the case of the stolen noodle stand. I see. So that means... Dr. Maractis stole the stand and pulled it all the way here? That would seem to be the case. But why? Don't ask me. Uh, we're done there. We examine... The trash can over there that's got something sticking out of it. There's got to be a good clue or two around here. You and your trash cans, go ahead and knock yourself out. Please, can't you see I'm doing my... Huh? Look! Another pair of... Underwear? Whoa, Apollo. You're a genius at finding panties. Stop saying that. Wait, these aren't. They're not mine. Could these have been stolen too? Bloomers added to the copper card. Um... Oh my god, knife stuck in the ground in front- Oh, it's there. I was going to say, a knife stuck where? I can't see it, but it's right there. It's that weird post thing, it doesn't look like a knife. It's a knife! A shiv, to be precise. Ooh, lingo! The defendant, Waki Kitaki, is the son of a known gangs- Is the son of known gangsters. The police are assuming this belongs to him. Wait, but wasn't the murder weapon a pistol? Huh, look at this, there's a handprint on this shiv. A handprint? Then there might be a fingerprint. Ooh, let's investigate. Time to do some fingerprinting. Okay, right. First, choose the fingerprint you want to examine. Choose a fingerprint. Look closely at the handle. See, there's more than one fingerprint there. Those black spots? That's right. Pick the one you want to analyze. I assume it's going to tell us to pick the darkest one. Yeah, the darkest print. Let's get detecting. Wow, she's practically glowing with excitement. First, bring some aluminium powder over the print. Oh, aluminium, as other people would say. Just touch the screen like this, see? The oil left by the print absorbs the alu aluminium powder, so you just dust it on. And blow it off. Blow? It's like whistling, you know? That's whistle, don't you? Just put your lips together. Wow, amazing, it's like magic. <laughs> Isn't it though? Right, let's give it a shot. Incidentally, it's important that you cover the entire fingerprint with the powder. Okay, so we just dust it everywhere. Now I have to figure out which button it is for um, blowing on this emulator. Sprinkle it all on. Whoa, go crazy with it. Okay, is it this button? Yep, I figured it out. Huh, good, clear, quite impressive. Next, to match the print. The police office a sample so you can tell whose fingerprint uh, so this finger who, <laughs> whose finger this print belongs to. 
Huh, that doesn't sound like as much fun as actually finding the print. Okay, pick the person whose print you think this is. You probably have a good idea whose knife this is already. Whose is it? Oh, yeah. Well, of course, we would compare it to his, because... Yeah. Match found. So, the fingerprints do belong to the defendants. Yep, isn't it amazing? Ah, oh, the power of science, it's my life. Polo, she's sparkling. And I'm dimming. Look sharp, spray up. The real fight is yet to come. Shut up, Polly. The trial hasn't even started, I'm already losing. Knife has a court record. So, have you met the defendants? Ah, uh, no. Visiting hours are almost over at the detention centre. You might think about wrapping up here and heading over. Good idea. I don't know what good it will do. We have a witness and a knife with prints. Have I mentioned I've got a bad feeling about this? Don't worry. It's like a right tradition. Some traditions I can live without. Okay. So, move to here. Move to here. And we move to the detention centre. And that's the last option that we pick. We don't have to pick any talking stuff, so June 15th, Detention Centre Visitors Room. I'm sorry meeting hours for the day are all done, but we still have three minutes. I'll put in your request, but don't expect anything. The father's talking in the private room with him. The father? You mean like a priest? You mean the suspect's father? Mr. Winfred Big Wins Kataki himself. Not someone I care to meet. Die, you! You're the one on your way out, old. Okay. Ah, they're here. Whoa, this guy radiates power. Power with a cute apron? You walk his lawyer? You walk his lawyer? Yes, sir. Well, I'm Big Grins Kitaki, fourth head of the Kitaki family. Capish? Uh, actually, I came to speak to your son. Mr. Justice. Yes? My son's innocent. He killed no one. If you were found guilty, it wouldn't be good. Capiche? Yes! I'm all about capiching. Capiche loud and clear. you got to do more than just understand to make it. You'll learn, though. Even if the lesson comes at the end of your short life. I don't feel so good. What's the big idea, old man? You can't treat me like a kid no more. Not now. You know why? I... I want to go to the clink. I like it here. It must be walkie. A G's on a G till he does hard time. Biz... Bizoy. Okay, you're weird. You'll see when I get out of here, things will change. Silence! My apologies, Mr. Justice. He's usually such a nice boy. Forgive me if I have a hard time believing that. Ha! <laughs> you can't take me under your wing this time, old man. You heard me? I don't need no trial. I did it. I think that's enough for today, Mr. Justice. Don't let me down tomorrow. So much for talk, uh, talking to our client. But we made so much progress today. We even found my panties. I had fun at least. Of course, the biggest mystery of all remains. How am I supposed to build a case for the trial? I almost forgot. It's time for my show. Tonight I'm performing at the Wonder Bar. You should come check it out. To be continued, we didn't take those panties that we found in the trash back. I assume they were belong to um, Little Plum. We didn't take them back. I'll see if they were actually hers. I guess she'd already gone and stuff like that. So anyway, we did solve a lot of stuff in that. Like she said, we found her panties. We found the car that hit Mr. Wright. We found the stand. But now we've been all brought up into this murder of a guy who's been shot in the head after he stole the stand and took it to the park for some reason. And Walkie's knife was there. We found his fingerprint. We've met Emma Sky again, who we haven't seen since Trials and Tribulations. No, not Trials and Tribulations. Um, I haven't seen since the first game. Rise from the Ashes. That's what I was trying to think of. Not Trials and Tribulations. Trying to think of Rise from the Ashes. Wait, was that from the first game? Yeah, it was the first game. Yeah. Oh, God, I'm getting myself confused. And we've met. Well, sort of met. Clavi Clavier Gavin. 
Christoph Gavin's brother, and looks like twin brother to me. Ha! Huh. So we did a lot in this. And like I said, the YouTube video that I saw for this took less than an hour, but it took me like an hour and ten minutes. But I guess it's because of me doing all the talking and stuff. Like now, making this video last longer. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time. Some more apologies to this attorney where we're going to be in the courtroom. We'll see who is going to be the prosecutor. I think we can figure that out. And we'll see how it all goes with trying to defend Walkie and his supposed murder of uh, this Raktis guy who was pulling the the cat. The stand. <sighs> anyway, thank you for watching. See you all next time. Good. Bye.